Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Fireside Chat with Sumit and me. Um, I'm super excited to host Sumit today. He's, I think, one of the most impactful people in machine learning. Uh, he's the creator of PyTorch, if you don't know, and he does research in Meta. So, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Certainly. Now, I'm I uh, I came into AI about fourteen years ago. Um, the first year I was a child artist. Uh, I I tried to be a visual artist, and then I uh, that I'm not a very good person. I'm into AI. On, on my journey, I picked up open source and then the tools to myself. Um, and I them that together uh, with 20 other people uh, in 2017, and uh, I've been leading the human efforts since then. A big amount of maintainers maintainers. So I feel like everyone has sort of has this um, research uh, area of interest uh, when they are beginning with machine learning. So yours was AI art, or like how did you begin doing machine learning? Yeah. Um, when I when I was doing a, an internship um, in a visual studio that was in visual effects movies, um, then I. I was in scary that. And then I uh, one day saw it uh, about putting images in 3D. This talk from Microsoft and so he was making a talk with a bunch of images for a vacation, and then you can ask the program to work in 3D, it's a rotation relative to the and you can go and explore them. Um, well, I can't wait, you can automatically navigate the code. I thought that was How does one know from one picture of the same as the other? I didn't know how to do that I knew at that time. So you started like a machine learning engineer uh, doing this stuff. I started a not a very for a few years because I picked up the math and the engineering and the engineering. I did not. The techniques for 3D computer vision were mostly linear. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what did you see when you were 
when you started uh, doing machine learning and uh, picked up, uh, what was actually missing from the ecosystem that made you create PyTorch? Okay. Uh, so, machine learning until 2015 was very small, maybe, maybe 2,000 people. And uh, you were like, I will just uh, create a bunch of abstractions and accelerated learning library. And That's great. Um, were there like any key principles that you have adopted in uh, since the beginning of PyTorch that you have stick to? Because like ML is an area that changes a lot, and uh, you eventually need to evolve according to it. But uh, were there anything that didn't really change since the start of the development of PyTorch? Uh, I think two things. Well. Um, Fundamental philosophy we adopted was the Model, 
you uh, you're losing some performance, you want to do some actually going to ask uh, how do you keep um, your API stable uh, meanwhile just catching up to the cutting edge research because method is actually for cutting edge research in my opinion and uh, you are innovating super fast but still try to keep a stable API so um, is there anything else that you're doing uh, specifically to keep that uh, trade-off yeah I think uh, uh, a lot of the maintainers are in so many features because they are breaking And I think that's something that just can still and then keep easy to support the same time. I think just being Um, I wanted to ask, um, what are the most challenging aspects for scaling PyTorch in general? Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, um, so at the moment, the room PyTorch is about uh, 200 developers, maybe at uh, and then another 100 plus developers. Uh, uh, are using AMD and some stuff. It's a fairly if you if you mix I think it's always fun to have all these people work on a single code base and the code base is different. Over time. Um, I think we try to make sure that it's user facing, it's at least nice. Uh, it's not user in the back, it is mentioning user that are coming in. We just keep it that way. I think putting a lot of thought into how we interact with the code base. Yeah. 
Okay. Job actually involve uh, doing the roadmap for, for instance, PyTorch 3.0. Uh, do you do strategy type of stuff, or like, yeah. uh, do you determine the direction that uh, the APIs are going? Uh, how? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm now, uh, um, um, two years ago, almost now, uh, nearly two years ago. Compile a lot, by the way. <laughs> it most of the time works well, to be honest. Um, you just need to fix a bit of, um, you know, try to make your graph queued only and also like uh, change some of the operations, and it just works magically, in my opinion. Uh, so close. <laughs> in general, for compilers, when someone is a real engineer, Oh, other submitted compiler near the compiler two years old. So we compile in any form for people doing good stuff. Yeah. Um. I wanted to ask, um, do you, since you are doing strategy, like, do you foresee anything uh, coming up for PyTorch 3.0? Have you ever, um, you know, just um, made the roadmap uh, or like have envisioned uh, it from ahead? Um, as I was mentioning, tools to evolve, uh, but you don't have to evolve if 
Uh, in the test case, I think we think Nico and Aries near. So I don't actually expect how we're going to to even even Nick for thinking about two point two any time soon. Since we have less than 10 minutes, maybe we could uh, move with the questions coming from the audience. And also, um, I have some questions from Twitter, but uh, we can go one by one. So can we hand the microphone to the person in the front? OK. I, I can directly ask. Yeah. Can we have this because we are live streaming, I think. Okay. I'm sorry. My name is Constantine and I'm with Gintopia, which is a Web3 development platform. The question with the introduction of Flash Function version 2 and low bit models, which make our development much more efficient. Apart from hardware acceleration, we see will this make development of new models and therefore less power hungry and resource consumption? Or will we consume the same resources that make models more powerful, like four times more powerful? I think uh, the way we think our model. Is mostly a model of training a model. You're generally going to wait for the training to finish, so we can afford it in two weeks. More, and you don't, you don't build the model. So, I Uh, and uh, 
I have a question from Twitter. Um, do you, um, are we going to have a torch for Rust or JavaScript? I torch. I meant like torch, uh, but for. Uh, I, uh, the thing is, we, we, we thought about actually. Problem always you have to parse the function code and writing a function that consumes the user code. Uh, from a and research perspective, we decided no, uh, but we definitely have no more. Cool. Um, are there any more questions? Uh, Can we hand it to the team? Um, do you see the value in to migrate away from the dependency on Fortran? On what? Fortran? Fortran. I think uh, we take the dependency on Fortran because of the um, I think that, uh, it's hard to foresee. Our attempt at compiler we um, to see if we can maybe compile more code with user workloads than uh, a quick compiler. But, uh, like, uh, usually, we use a few versions for the compiler. It's very difficult to be a lot of work. I think for Chinese, it's not all. One more question, I think. Hello, um, I thought I could Forecast to be honest, but with hugging face, uh, so basically, from I have a different perspective on this. I think uh, TensorFlow, if you want to get easy stuff done and just deploy the production, it's great because like it also has this TensorFlow extended ecosystem. Um, for PyTorch, I feel like it's more cutting edge research and uh, it has um, I think, and Onyx. 
Onyx, I find it a bit painful to work with, to be honest. Um, so with Hugging Face, uh, looking at the, some statistics from the users, we have seen a lot of increase in PyTorch usage and uh, not so much for TensorFlow, unfortunately. Um, because I feel like the APIs are more Pythonic, it's easier to implement and PyTorch somehow innovates faster thanks to the community as well. Uh, because from what I know, TensorFlow Core doesn't really accept any PRs from the community, so I feel like I don't think it's gonna die because so many companies already use TensorFlow and they picked it up since 1.x. Um, but uh, I feel like for cutting edge stuff, um, since companies want to catch up with the state of the art results, they will eventually switch to PyTorch. Um, this is my based opinion uh, as a former TensorFlow user currently switch to PyTorch for research. Thank you. We are out of time. Uh, thanks a lot for listening and thank you for answering my questions. <laughs>